What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Scott Proctor, joined, as always, alongside my guy, Matt Morris. We're back with another episode of Simple Question, but this time we'll have more than one because we've got a special, special guest joining us today for the very first time, a 10-year NFL veteran, a former NFL head coach, and current ESPN NFL analyst. It's Herm Edwards. Coach, thanks so much for joining us. How are we doing? I'm doing well, and thank you for allowing me to be on your show. No doubt about it. It's a, it's a joy to have you. Let's hop right into things because it was a it was a crazy day on Sunday. Obviously, let's start here. The Las Vegas Raiders beat the New England Patriots on the final play of the game on on Sunday, thanks to a, to a head scratching you know lateral all time stiff arm by by Chandler Jones on Mac Jones. Coach, you you've also been part of a, a historical last second victory. Obviously, the miracle at the Meadowlands back in 1978 when you were playing for the Philadelphia Eagles. How do these two situations compare, if at all? There are two situations that uh, they're entirely different. And I know when at the end of it, you know, you watch the play at the end on both both parties and you watch how they scored. But when you go back to, to the Patriot Vegas game, um, the question you got to ask yourself is this, uh, especially from the coaching point of it, with 37 seconds left, you have a lead. Uh, they have the ball on the plus 30. You have 37 seconds left in this game. They have a score touchdown uh, for them to tie the game. Uh, you're on defense, and um, your corner goes up there and plays press, man-to-man -man press, and they hit you on for a fade, and, and they tie the game. Well, the question is, why are you up there pressing with 37 seconds? Why, why, why are you even doing that? With this 37 seconds left in the game, you are winning the game by seven points, and I know they're going on this drive. But why are you pressing, playing man-to-man, -man, bump and run at the line of scrimmage and allow the guy outside release and they throw a touchdown pass on you? Okay, so that happens. So now it gets tied. So now they kick the ball off. You receive the ball. Now it's the tie football game. There's two seconds left. Take a knee and go overtime. Why are you running the play? If you're on the plus 50 or the plus 45 and you want to throw Hail Mary to try to get pass interference, maybe you get lucky, okay, but you're on the minus 30, and there's two seconds left. Go overtime. Okay, so you don't do that, and, and you run this play. And for the life of me, uh, when this thing's unfolding, I'm going, well, why? what are we doing here? Do they not know the score? So this is what I say about football. It's almost like parenting. You spend a lot of time raising your kids. Uh, when you sit at the supper table and you talk to them about doing things, certain things you have to you have to act a certain way. You got to do a certain thing in life, right? In coaching, it's the same thing. You go on meetings, you go on the practice field. You have all these things giving them, uh, players information, uh, situations in football. And the crazy thing about the game of coaching, like life, when you're raising a family, when your kids leave the house, you have no control of what they're going to do. When you're a football coach and they leave and they go on the field, you have no control of what those players are going to do. You get to make a lot of decisions, but you have no control. No doubt about it. I'll also ask, too, because it seemed very, you know, you're talking about the coaching side of things. It seems very uncharacteristic of one Bill Belichick, who is arguably, you know, the greatest coach in, in, in American football. What do you think? his message was to, to the locker room after that game? Or how do you think that's talked about post-game again in, in, the, in a scenario in a franchise under Bill Belichick where that just simply doesn't happen? Well, you know, Bill's going to – any coach is going to tell him, look, this is a, this is a game we squandered. Yeah. Yep. And, and I would go through the timeline of it. I wouldn't go back to that one play. There, there's a timeline to this. There, 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 there are two situations before this even occurred. That didn't need to, that did, shouldn't have took place. Right. Mm -hmm. There's 37 seconds left, guys. Why are you in press coverage? Why, why are you doing that? They yep. need to score a touchdown. Why are you playing bump and run, press coverage, single safety high? Why are you doing that with 37 seconds left? Yeah. I, I played corn. I, 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 I don't know. I, I'm like, what, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm watching this, trying to figure it out, and I'm going, maybe. Maybe I don't know what I'm looking at anymore, right? It so yeah. no one's talking about that. Right. No one's even talking about that. That cause, it's a cause and effect. That caused this train to start going in the wrong direction. And then when that happens, they kick the ball off. 
you got to know, as soon as they kick the ball off, I ain't running a touchdown. Hey, I'm on the sideline. I'm telling hey, guys, let's get ready. We're going overtime. I'm not even thinking about running the play. And then you run the play. Do they not know it's a tie game? I mean, it, 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 it. I'm going to tell you something, guys. And here's the sad part about this. If this is a coach that had lost some games and wasn't playing, you know, and their team wasn't playing well, you get fired for stuff like this. Let me tell you something. The sickening thing for me about the miracle of Meadowland play is this. And I was a young player. It was my second year in the league. The GM and the head coach got fired the next day. See, and, and, and that's real life. Okay, so as much as we want to laugh and joke and say, oh, man, hey, you know what? This is real life, man. People's jobs are in jeopardy. You know, your ability to now, if you don't get in the playoffs, if the New England Patriots don't get in the playoffs, they're going to come back to this game. And I get it. The player says it's my bag. No, it ain't. It ain't your bag, man. You just cost this whole football team and it had nothing to do with talent. It has it had about it all boils down to decision making, man. This is why coaches always say, in big moments, you want smart players on the field, man. This ain't got nothing to do with talent. Talent has nothing to do with this. This is like, you know what this is? This is a bunch of guys going to the park and throwing the ball around. That's what they were doing. They were playing street ball. It was like, hey, man, throw it to me. Okay, I'll catch it. You run back because I throw it to you. This is like in the park. This with the is game a on the line. This football game, man. With the game this on the line. This is real life. Yeah. This matters. And fans look at it and go, all of this. But from the other part of it, from the coaching part of it, this is just, this is sickening, man. Yep. It is. It is. And, you know, talking about teams that are, you know, playoff hopefuls, and obviously the Patriots hurt themselves with that loss. Uh, Another team is the Jets, who look like they're trying to, you know, make a run. But this offense is struggling. And obviously there's a lot of questions at quarterback. but this Jets defense is very good, you know, coach. And, and my question to you is, do you feel like with the drama that's going on on the offensive side of the ball with the New York Jets, do you feel like they're almost squandering this impressive defense that they have? And, you know, guys like Sauce Gardner, who's a uh, probably going to be defensive rookie of the year? Yep. Well, no, I think this. I, I think you have a defensive-minded head coach. He comes yep. in um, and, you know, you have this understanding that, your defense is probably going to be pretty good because of the coach. And if you have an offensive coach come in, you go, you know what? Your offense is probably going to be pretty good. And, and I don't know if you waste it mm-hmm. because it's not like these players are leaving. They don't graduate. <laughs> I mean, it's not college football or they don't have an NIL new deal where they leave, right? I mean, they're they're contracted in. Now, if one of them might retire or you got to negotiate with somebody because they're in here, but they're coming back. And I think these are experiences that you go through. This is reminds me of when we were in Tampa and we first arrived down there with Tony Dungeon. Um, we built this defense. And you could have said the same thing about that for the first couple of years. But all of a sudden, we find ourselves in the championship game three years or four years after that against the Rams, right? And that defense was building. It had Lynch. It had Brooks. It had Rodney Barber. It had Warren Sapp. That was that defense, Right. But the first couple of years, because we were trying to get the offense situated and what we wanted to become, and if you're the Jets, they're trying to figure out who the quarterback is. So I don't think you waste it. I just think the defense takes great pride in what they're doing, no different than what San Francisco is doing, right? San Francisco has an outstanding defense. They've gone through three quarterbacks and found a way to win games. That's what the Jets have to do. They, they got to do what the 49ers are doing. They got to find ways to win games now with your defense. So I don't know if you squander it because I'm going to tell you something. As long as he's the head coach, this team is always going to be known for their defense. It just happens. Yeah. yeah. That's just part of the deal. No doubt about it. And coach, obviously you led the New York Jets to their last division title <laughs> back in 2002. <laughs> Um, you know, over a decade or two decades ago now, 20 years ago at this point. How close or far away do you think this franchise is from doing that again? Obviously, with the, the Buffalo Bills and Josh Allen at the helm and obviously an upstart Miami Dolphins offense as well. And obviously, you can never really discount Bill Belichick and the Patriots. How close or far away do you think this franchise is from doing that again and reclaiming an AFC East crown? Well, they, they have a playoff defense. There's no doubt about it. it. And I just think, and you mentioned it, you know, when, when you build your team, you always build it within the division. How do we win a division game? Well, they beat Buffalo once, 
right? Yeah. Okay, so we, we, we've done that. Haven't beaten the New England Patriots. And I said that when New England walked in there. I said, you know what? They better beat the Patriots. You've got to beat the Patriots. At the end, it still goes through there. W- whether we like it or not, you still got to beat those guys. You can't let them, you can't let division teams beat you twice. You can split with them, but when you start beating division teams twice in a season, then you got a shot, right? And that's where it starts. And, and look, coach knows that. Uh, the players understand that. You know, when they get the quarterback situation settled, then you have this, you have the ability to, to advance. Your defense is going to get better. It's not getting any worse. It's going to get better. But now can your offense, whoever that quarterback is, and they that's the big decision going forward with the New York Jets. Who is the quarterback? Let's talk about that, Coach, because I'm curious how you kind of view the handling of the Jets quarterback situation so far. Obviously, they have a lot of drive capital up in Zach Wilson, and he hasn't really lived up to the expectation so far through about a season and a half. Mike White came in and played admirably and kind of really got that team going before he obviously exited with, with a rib injury. And obviously, Zach is going to start Thursday night football. How do you view the handling of the Jets quarterback situation? And who do you think should or will end up being the guy moving forward here? Well, I, I think uh, Coach had to handle it in, in this in this way. He, he needed to make it. He needed to make a change in the fact because Zach Wilson uh, had lost the team. And hopefully Zach Wilson has learned a lesson by sitting there watching this thing unfold. I thought his last press conference was much better. Now, I don't know how he interacts with the players. Look, when you're the quarterback, guys, when you're the quarterback, you're not just an offensive player. You're involved with the whole team. The great quarterbacks are involved with the defensive players. They're everywhere. They, they, They are like the mayor when they get into the locker room. They have these relationships with all players because you want to trust the quarterback. Because he why? Because he plays with the ball. Quarterback plays with the ball. He affects everybody in that organization. Once the ball is hiked to the quarterback, he makes a decision. Defense, see ball, get ball, you go play. But the quarterback affects the game. He affects the locker room. Every player listens to the quarterback when he has a press conference. Every player watches the quarterback when he comes to the sideline after a bad series. They want to know who is it. He's the CEO, man. He's the CEO. And players want to see it. And players know the quarterbacks have control of the situation, that get it, that give you this ability to win when you're behind. Who is that guy? Do they have that guy? I don't know that. That ain't up to me to figure out. I had my own issues with quarterbacks, right? And when you don't have one that you can count on, you don't sleep well Saturday night. When you have one you can count on, when I made a quarterback change there, because we were a two and five football team, and the year before that we go to the playoffs, and I had to make a quarterback change because I knew that would affect the team. I could have changed any other position, but when I made the quarterback change from Benny Testaverde to Chad Pennington, that's the year we won the division. We were two and five. We started out two and five, but I knew I had to make a change. I made the change. Players bought into it. Right change. We win the division. I was fortunate. Absolutely. Well, in talking about quarterback changes, and I know one that happened recently, you know, the last few years was the move the Philadelphia Eagles went with moving on from Carson Wentz to Jalen Hurts. And uh, th- this Eagles team this year with Hurts at the helm just seems so unbelievable, not just on offense, but also on defense. Coach, do you think the Eagles on paper are the most complete team in the NFL this year, even when you know most of the talk is around Kansas City and Buffalo? There's no doubt. And you can look at the numbers, but you can also the eye test when you watch them play, right? Mm-hmm. When you watch Philadelphia Eagles play, they're very balanced on both sides. They, they got a top five offense. They got a top five defense. They're second in the National Football League in running the ball. A lot of that's due because of the quarterback. The quarterback has 156 carries. He has 13 touchdowns running the football. All right. And they have, you know, A.J. Brown, they, 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 they bring him in all of a sudden. And now they got this passing attack. Defensively, guys, they got 55 sacks. When you're a 55 sack football team, you're, 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 you're like really good now. I mean, you're really good, you know? And, and so they got a good secondary. They can take the ball away. They're plus, plus the giveaway takeaways plus 12. I mean, so they're the most complete team. Right. And so I, I think it, it's fun to watch them play because 
I think when we look at it from the fan, you know, you always worry about, well, you should blow everybody out. It don't work that way in the NFL. It works this way. Win. I don't care how you win. Go win. The big key now for the Philadelphia Eagles would be this. When you enter the playoffs, can you win? You'll have Hopefully you'll have home field advantage. Can you win? Can you win playoff games and get to the Super Bowl? That's, that's how they're going to be judged now. Don't waste this. You talk about a wasted opportunity. Don't waste this opportunity as a franchise. I know. I, I played there. I, I remember our playoff runs, right? We, we had playoff runs and got to a Super Bowl. Didn't finish the way we liked it. We lost our Super Bowl. But I get it. I've played on playoff teams. I've coached playoff teams. It starts now. The whole offseason is built on one thing. How do we compete in our division? How can we win our division? If we don't win our division, how do we get into the tournament? The tournament is the playoffs. They've allowed allotted one more team. Now there's seven teams getting in the playoffs, right? How do we get in the tournament? And then when you get in the tournament, how do we match up? No doubt about it. No doubt. Oh, yeah. You're absolutely right about Hurts, too. This is this is where he's going to be judged because he's proven to everybody that he can do it in the regular season. He's in MVP conversations. He's arguably the best dual threat quarterback in the NFL now. Now the questions start, can you do it in the playoffs? Can you oh, lead yeah. the Eagles to playoff success to a Super Bowl? Because, as you mentioned, you get the number one seed, you lock up home field advantage. There's really no excuse for you, at least not to get to the big dance. Yeah. Well, it's ironic because they play the Cowboys this week. Correct. Mm-hmm. Right. And this has always been a big game yep. for yep. the Eagles and the Cowboys. And you it's kind know. of ironic because the first time they played, they didn't have a starting quarterback. The Cowboys didn't have a starting quarterback. Now, this time they play, the Eagles are not going to have a starting quarterback. But, the, but, but, but really, the bottom line is this, is that in my era, when I played, to win the conference and to get to the conference championship game and to win that, you knew who you were going to play when the season started. You are going to play the Cowboys. Yep. And that's who we played. We yep. played the Cowboys and beat them and went to the Super Bowl. And that's how you speak. So... You kind of know the teams when the season starts. These are the teams we're going to play against if we get in the playoffs, boys. Yeah. Can you beat them? Yeah, hopefully we get a Philly and uh, Cowboys matchup round three in the playoffs again. Be <laughs> Probably last question we got for you, Coach, and unfortunately we got we to gotta end on a bit of a sad note, but uh, Franco Harris yeah. unfortunately passed away at the age of 72. Uh, his number 32 jersey was going to be retired on Sunday by the yeah. Pittsburgh Steelers on the 50th anniversary of the Immaculate Reception, Coach. How do you look back on, you know, the great, you know, life uh, and career of Franco Harris? Well, it's not just the football life, it's the man. Yep. And, and what he represented uh, as a Steeler player, but which is as a man, you know, as, as a kind, very kind man. Um, thought about the community, thought about other people, right? I mean, he was at, I, I've done a couple of events with Franco, played against him as well. You know, he was in my era, a little older than me, but played against Franco. And it's a, it's a devastating loss. And, and what I've learned as I've gotten older, um, it's kind of ironic. You know, you, you always wake up and you see these bottom lines, tickers, and you see people passing away, right? And, and these are people now passing away that were in my era that affected my life that I knew, whether it was coaches or just players, it's, it, all sports, all walks of life. A lot of people, you know, you see their names on the clicker. I was flying from Bristol last night coming home, and I, I didn't see it. And I got, you know, and I woke up this morning, I look at the phone and I said, what? He, what? And it is shocking. Um, I know this uh, and I believe in this. I truly do. Uh, when God needs angels, he's going to take you. Yep. And, you know, and, and that's what I've always believed, you know, that when God needs more angels to do his work, he's going to take you. And, and he was an angel. There's no doubt about it. He'll be truly missed. There's no doubt about that. Rest awesome. in peace, Franco awesome. Harris, awesome. praying for his family and the Harris family, that's for sure. But that's going to do it for us uh, for this episode of Simple Question for Scott Proctor, Matt Morris, the great coach, Herm Edwards. Thanks so much for joining us. And we'll catch you on the next episode of Simple Question. Thanks for watching. Feel free to check out our other videos and don't forget to smack that subscribe button down below while you're at it. Also, for more great and original content, head right over to bbmsports.com.